Hello, I wanted to record a, a couple of short videos that uh, demystify the installation and deployment uh, options that you have with Nixis dashboard. Um, what I wanted to show here, I wanted to do this across two videos. So in the first video, I'll do a little bit of lecture and we'll do some review, some some fundamentals. We'll, we'll be all on the same page so we understand the concepts that we're talking about. Then I'll talk about some choices that you have around topologies, like how you connect this stuff to your, to your ACI fabric. And you do have some choices and we'll talk about them and I'll give you a recommendation as well. Uh, and then we'll go on to talking about a little bit about the applications that you may choose to run on Nexus dashboard, right? So the main two are Nexus Insights and uh, Multi-Site Orchestrator, which is being rebranded as Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator, but it's the same app, diff different name, uh, uh, and, and, and where and how you might run those with Nexus Dashboard, because there are some things to consider. And then in the companion video, I'll actually take you through a live install of a real cluster in my lab. So my intention here is not to cover every possible configuration concept and detail. What I'm really trying to do is in a short, sweet format, just cover the, the areas where we have common questions, cover some of the confusion that a lot of people may run into when you're first setting this up. Uh, of course, if you want all the details and, and, the, and the full configuration guide, that's always online at cisco.com. And if, if you search for Cisco Nexus Dashboard Deployment Guide, you'll, you'll find those details uh, and can, can read it to your heart's content. Okay, so let's actually jump into some of the, the basic architectural fundamentals here. So when you receive your Nexus dashboard cluster, it is a cluster of three UCS servers, right? Three nodes. Uh, and on the back of a server, just like any server, there's going to be a series of different networking interfaces. So in the context of Nexus dashboard, each of these interface types has a certain job that we need to be clear we understand. So the first one is the SIMC. Now that's not shown in the picture because that's basically an interface that you would connect for any server for remote KVM and managing of the server platform itself. But when you install Nexus dashboard, you actually need to have the SIMC connected. So you'll have that set up. That's, that's pretty straightforward. The second type of interface here uh, for Nexus dashboard terms is called the data interface, right? They're data interfaces. And if you look at the back of the server, there's a four port SFP plus card with you know 10 gig interfaces there. And these are the data interfaces. So the job that these interfaces do is it, we use these interfaces to actually reach and talk to your, your fabrics or what we call Nexus dashboard sites. And I'll get to that. We also use these interfaces uh, between the three nodes to form the cluster. So there's inter-cluster communication there that uses the data interface. And of course, when we install our apps, this is the interface that we're going to receive all of the stream of telemetry about all of our devices and, and everything coming out of our fabrics. These are probably the most important interface and it's where most of the work gets done. Uh, the third type of interface we have here is what we call the management interface. And if you look at the back of the server or the picture here, these are the one gig copper interfaces and you have two of them. And this is used for, yeah, as you guessed it, you know, user uh, interface access like the web interface, SSH, uh, things like NTP, AAA, DNS, uh, firmware, intersite is all going to happen through the management interface. So it has a, a different set of jobs. Now, in terms of cabling this up to your environment, you're always going to want to do it in pairs, right? So redundancy. So the data in the data interfaces, you're going to connect port one and port two across, you know, your leaves and the management interface. You're going to connect to your out of band management network, you know, using both of those. What will happen automatically in the background is we will form a Linux bond. The reason why I say that is you don't need to configure a VPC or a port channel. None of that is needed. We do it for you using a Linux bond driver. So you just connect the cables and you're done. Now, there are some special considerations that we need to be absolutely clear on about the data interface. So I mentioned earlier that this is the interface that the Nexus dashboard applications will use to communicate with the ACI fabric. So some pretty basic things, obviously, this subnet has to be routable uh, so it can reach uh, the fabric and traffic can happen. And generally speaking, the IP connectivity uh, to ACI is going to be via the in-band management path. So on all of our ACI spines and leaves and apex, we will have already assigned an in-band management IP. And these are the IPs that the Nexus Insights app running on Nexus dashboard will use to contact, gather information and receive telemetry. Now, 
You can see I put a double asterisk there. This is true when you're using the Nexus Insights application because this is how it has to work. We do have an optional deployment of Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator or MSO as we used to call it, uh, where you have an NDO only deployment. We don't necessarily need to use the in-band path. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but just pretty much understand that in most cases, you're gonna need to connect via the in-band path to do what you need to do with Nexus Dashboard apps. The second job that I mentioned is the Nexus Dashboard cluster will use the data interface to actually form that cluster. So what is actually happening is the cluster nodes will build VXLAN tunnels between the three of them, right? And inside the VXLAN tunnel, it will form the cluster. Probably the only thing you need to care about here is that the minimum MTU is 1500 bytes. Okay, that's standard. You don't need jumbo frames, but just be aware you don't want to go lower than 1500 bytes. Um, and you will also notice when we get to the setup part that inside this VXLAN tunnel or as part of the cluster setup, we have to specify app and service networks. D don't worry about those. Those stay inside the, 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 the inter-cluster tunnels. They don't get routed outside. You don't have to worry about them. And I'll show you that when I, when I build, build the demo. The next concept here, and this one's pretty simple, is Nexus Dashboard uses the term site. So what is a site in Nexus Dashboard speak? Um, so the first thing to understand, if you weren't already aware, is Nexus Dashboard can accommodate and work with and receive information and telemetry from multiple sites at the same time. And it can be a mix of ACI sites, DCNM sites, cloud, a cloud ACI sites. It, and a single Nexus Dashboard can accommodate multiple multiple different fabrics, I guess you could say. So we use that term site to define a given ACI or DCNM fabric. And so the boundaries of that are are the management domain. So if it's if we're talking about ACI, a a a a single site or a multipod site that is managed by one APIC cluster, right? That's what we would call a Nexus dashboard site. If you're looking at something like uh, multi-site, yes, they're using the the term site again, but you would add those as two independent Nexus dashboard sites, right? But just so you know what a site is. But never forget, always remember that the sites need to be added to Nexus Dashboard via the data interface always. This is an area where people get confused because you have to set up your, your cluster to follow the data path for this to happen. Okay, let's switch over into how do we connect this to my, my fabric? What are the topology choices that I have? So there's a couple of options. Uh, uh, option number one is you're gonna take your Nexus Dashboard uh, data interfaces and you're gonna directly connect them to the leaf ports in your fabric, right? So we're we're assuming that you already have in-band management already set up, you know, before getting to Nexus dashboard. Um, you're gonna physically exit, you know, plug the cables into the leafs directly. And of course, you know, this is acting like a bare metal install. So you know when we do bare metal, you have to do all of the fabric access configurations. So like AEPs, uh, profiles, interface policy groups, all that stuff because we're connecting physical interfaces. Uh, on the leaves themselves. And of course, you know, in order for these bare metal endpoints uh, in the form of the data interfaces of the Nexus dashboard cluster, we're going to create a dedicated bridge domain and an EPG inside tenant management, right? Tenant inside tenant management in, let's say, in band VRF uh, for those nodes to live. And of course, just like any other EPG situation, the zero trust model applies. So we're going to need to have filters and contracts that allows the Nexus dashboard data interfaces to talk to the in-band IPs of the leaves and spines and apex. Um, and I'll show you what ports and protocols you need in the very next slide. So this is one option that you have. The second option, and I'll call this the preferred option, right? And I'll explain why in a moment, is to connect it using a layer three out, right? So notice the picture has changed a little bit. Again, just like before, we assume that you've already set up in-band management IPs uh, inside ACI for all your nodes. Um, in addition, instead of directly connecting our Nexus dashboard cluster to the leaf port, we're going to connect them through some intermediary generic layer three network in between where my Nexus dashboard cluster is and where ACI is, right? So not directly connected. So in order to make that connection complete, we need to route. So that means we need to create a layer three out in tenant management, so in-band VRF as well, and we simply do routing. 
between wherever we place our Nexus dashboard cluster and you know wherever our ACI fabrics live. Um, again, just like before, the zero trust model applies because we're crossing EPG boundaries here. Uh, and this is the list of all the ports. I won't read them to you, but just know that you need to do filters and contracts. Alternatively, you could disable policy enforcement on the in-band VRF if you wanted. It would be less secure, but let's say in your lab, it's, it's quick and dirty. Otherwise, do filters and contracts. Now, why is option two the preferred option? Let me try to explain my thinking here. If you do it this way, and let's say you had a situation where you wanted to do multi-site, so you wanted to send telemetry from both of these sites that are geographically dispersed uh, to your Nexus dashboard cluster, right? Um, there's a couple of benefits here by going the layer three out method is um, you can add additional sites just by simple routing. So you add fabric B here and you set up another layer three out to the same generic layer three intermediary network, which then has a path to your, your your Nexus dashboard cluster and everything is good. So you can connect Fabric C and Fabric D and so on and so on, right? So it's simple, simply a routing function that's very, very easy to implement. The second thing here is there's no dependency on the ACI Fabric state. Um, so for example, if I took the direct connect method, I um, and let's say I wanted to upgrade the fabric, so I'm rebooting leaves and things like that. Well, if I'm rebooting leaves, the data interface might go down as a normal you know, consequence of that but it might affect then the cluster goes, oh no, um, two of my nodes are unavailable, the cluster is down, I need to you know, do things. It, what I'm saying is it, like, it, it makes it more work and more, let's say, complexity for the cluster itself. Uh, so this is why I don't like the Direct Connect model. The, the ultimately, it's your choice. Both of them are valid, fully supported. I happen to like the Layer 3 approach myself better. And this is what I'm gonna show you when I set up my cluster is using this methodology. Okay, moving quickly on is we have uh, some choices to make about which applications we're going to run on our Nexus dashboard cluster. So you, 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 it's decision time, uh, and I'll give you some recommendations here. So let me just sort of lay out what we've got going on here. So we know on Nexus, in, on Nexus dashboard, at the same time, we can run the Nexus Insights app, we can run Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator, and even other apps that we have going on. We can run all of those on the same cluster, side by side, at the same time, right? That's not a problem at all, right? So you're thinking, well, why would I not do that? The thing to be aware of here is Nexus Insights and Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator have different latency maximums, and I gave you a quick little matrix here on the right. Um, and so if you look at those numbers, you know, ND node to ND node in terms of cluster forming is 150 milliseconds distance between them, right? Not so bad, 150 milliseconds is pretty far, you know, geographically speaking. Um, the Nexus dashboard orchestrator application to the APIC sites that they're managing is up to 500 milliseconds, right? That's really far. And you know, that, that makes sense because multi-site is meant to be, uh, at least possibly, uh, for geographically dispersed sites around the world, you know, that, that may be in different countries altogether. So that's good news. But when you look at the last line, the, the, the maximum latency for the Nexus Insights application to the fabric it's receiving telemetry from is 50 milliseconds, 50. Now, if you were mixing Nexus Insights and NDO on the same cluster, you have to use the lowest common denominator number, which would be 50 milliseconds. Now, that might not jive well with your multi-site deployment. You might have one site in Amsterdam and one site in South Africa. That's gonna be more than 50 milliseconds latency. That's not gonna work, right? So what do we do? What, what's my alternative? Because I want NI and I want NDO. Well, starting with the 2.02H release of Nexus Dashboard, which is out as of the time of the recording of this video, we offer a virtual version of Nexus Dashboard. But keep in mind, this is only when you want to run a dedicated instance of Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator on a virtual ND. You can't run NI on this virtual ND later. It's dedicated, right? It's NDO only. So when you do that, and this is what we would call the recommended approach. So you have your physical ND cluster, you put Nexus Insights and other apps there. For NDO only, you do a separate 
installation of a virtual Nexus dashboard cluster, and you only put NDO there, and thereby you get the best of both worlds in terms of latency maximums and all that kind of stuff. The good news is we don't charge you a license for the virtual Nexus dashboard, right? It just comes sort of with MSO, NDO, uh, and, you're, and you're good to go. So that's why we call it recommended. Now there is a, a third option here, and it's what I just talked about, is when you have that situation where you have an NDO only deployment and you wanna do it on the virtual Nexus dashboard cluster. So look, the, the image has changed a little bit. So um, we don't need to do any in-band management configurations here. We don't need to do any layer three out. Um, uh, all we need to do is add the site to the, the virtual Nexus dashboard cluster, connecting via the Apex out of band management IP. But remember, remember, remember that the path has to go through the Nexus dashboard data interfaces so that the drawing hopefully makes that clear, right? Always has to happen via, via the data interface. G generally speaking, the, the, the data and management networks here are better, better off if they're on different networks, right? And that has to do with which interface do I use for the default route? It, it could be confusing, right? And you don't want to be managing host routes and things like that. So generally speaking, they can be on the same network, but you're better off if you have them on different networks. So, um, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. So this would be option three, a virtual Nexus dashboard with NDO only, and this is how you would do it, okay? All right, so let's actually go on to the prerequisites for installing a Nexus dashboard cluster. So like day zero, you've just uh, racked it out of the box and we wanna actually begin the cluster. Let, what, let's keep in mind what we need to get ready for. So a very, you know, very quick and dirty checklist, not totally comprehensive, but these are the majors, right? So all your ND nodes, they're cabled and, and, and booted up as you, as you desire. Um, make sure that you have IP connectivity between the management and data interfaces of all the nodes, right? different networks, but there's there's connectivity, mostly for that cluster formation to happen. Um, make sure that your SIMCs are, are reachable as well, because we do, uh, when we do the cluster setup, we do have a small function that requires SIMC access to kind of bootstrap the node and, and get some information. Um, you're going to need to allocate certain IP addresses per node. Um, you don't need to care about the serial number because that part is now automated. Um, and remember that we are generally in a Nexus Insights application outcome. We want to make sure that we're connecting to the in-band management subnets of the ACI fabrics that we're, we're managing. So uh, either directly connected or, or layer three out. We have that in place. I always find it useful to kind of have a cheat sheet ahead of time. So each node needs at least three IP addresses here, one for the SIMC, one for the management, one for the data. So I wrote mine down. So I'll be referring back to this when I do my cluster setup in the next video, and I'll just fill in the IPs. Note the SIMC and the management IPs on the same network. No big deal there because they're totally different uh, dedicated interfaces, but the the data IPs are on a completely different network that is going to route via my layer three out to my in-band management IPs of the ACI fabrics that I want to work with. Okay, that's the end of the, the lecture video. Uh, I'll record a companion video where I actually show you this live in my lab and take you through all the setup so that everybody's clear on how that works. So look for that video and I hope you find it useful and, and best of luck on your Nexus dashboard journey.